Hey, it's James Wilson Taylor here for Rock Sound. A very, very swanky photo suite here in London, joined now by the winners of the Rock Sound Award for Best British Artist 2018. It is Don Broco. How are you guys? Woo! Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. <laughs> Congratulations. It's very, very exciting. Um, let's start with this incredible year you've had, really. Started it with the album release, obviously, uh, ending it with an award and announcing arguably your biggest ever tour early next year. Um, highlights. Let's start with that. Each one of you, let's have a highlight from the year that will be remembered for 2018 what are we thinking guys uh my highlight from the year would be uh all summer doing the walk tour that was a pretty big one yeah. i think that's i mean that's that'll probably be our standout thing yeah. i mean it's it's hard to kind of uh it's hard to sort of talk about walk touring in kind of is one thing because there's so many of course i guess like facets of it that we didn't even know about you know it was the first time we'd ever done it um we were obviously super excited to do it um seeing you know, from across the pond, what it was like, you know, growing up as a kid and seeing sure. videos on originally like VHS and stuff and then and then YouTube and, you know, but but actually doing it is a, is a very different experience. And I think we all just came away from it having like, uh, obviously absolutely knackered because it was, um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a long tour, uh, but like the best time and making some incredible friends and just getting a lot of kind of experiences that I think we didn't maybe expect we'd get out of it yeah. and on the last ever one as well i mean it's got to be interesting you know it's your first time out there but it's the last time it's ever happened did you feel the emotion at the end were there were there tears right at the end of it i mean it's a big it was a big run this summer big time yeah i mean yeah that, that's something as well that we weren't probably prepared for <laughs> emotionally look because we went into it just thinking i mean half the time you forget and you think wow i can't wait to do this next year or yeah, yeah, i can't yeah. wait to come back and then we saw some bands, friends of ours, like uh, like Bear Two, for example, came and did just three shows. And when Caleb was talking on stage about you know what the tour meant to him, how many years he in different bands and you know different um, you know musical projects, how many times he'd done the tour, and kind of grown up on it. You start to realize what it really meant to people yeah and uh yeah it was it was quite emotional towards the end huge impact huge impact and you alluded as well there up to like you made some friends out there we were chatting to uh chase atlantic very recently and they were saying how it's not happened yet has it but potential collab in the works you guys really yeah, want to, to work yeah, yeah. together yeah for sure i mean that's that's the fun thing about warp tour that um you don't get so much on other tours like the exposure to so many different groups and you know you've got was it seven weeks, uh, six, seven weeks, you know, to to hang out. So, you know, on a usual tour, it's so busy. You're sort of, you're running around doing stuff. And obviously, you know, there'll be a couple other bands on there, but to sometimes find the time to do stuff, you'll always be like, oh, I'll do it another time. And even, you know, Chase Atlantic, for example, like hanging out on, on the bus and, you know, during the tour, we're like, okay, let's, let's put aside a night and just, and jam something. To actually find the time still to do that was hard enough. <laughs> no, I'm sure. But, but being on a festival like you know like that with uh, such a kind of social um, vibe you know barbecues every night par bus parties you know there's loads of like insane like charity events that people will be a part of there's obviously the the, the warp to bowling there's so much on for, yeah. for the bands as well as um you know everyone going um you end up in a situation that you don't really find yourself in on on any other tour or really any other I get, for me since probably like school or if you went to uni i haven't really made that many mates after that all you at all at once like you don't you don't because you're busy you're working you might you know you're you might meet people for for a week or two but to to, to actually get to know someone to like call them a friend is something you kind of have to be in a position where you're going to see them you know a lot and day after day and warp tour uh, facilitates that so you'll you'll come away from that summer you know being mates with people that you didn't even know existed before that which is which is really special yeah that's so special and i guess as well it, it leads on to what's coming next for you guys which is of course this massive arena tour you're an arena level band now guys did you find that doing something like warp tour obviously you guys have toured for years and you're very very experienced live but when it's something like that where it's kind of relentless as you said it's every single day it's at different stage times all the time mixing up every day how does that fuel your live performance moving forward do you feel like you learnt a lot about yourselves and doing shows from that you definitely feel you've got to i mean be able to like switch it on i mean it's to, to a degree that's you know you're not always up for a show and that's i think you know, even even on a normal tour when, you know, sometimes you're just not always in the mood for it and you have to really get yourself in the zone before 
but with water there's no that's chance this, there's, there's, it's like 11am you're woken up at least someone's like you know literally just being like Rob we're on stage in half an hour it's time it's Get time. Up. <laughs> Rob did actually learn a very important lesson on water tour that I still feel a bit bad about but that was to be at stage on time because it's a it's a relentless schedule on the you know you can't be late because it affects every band after you and uh, one day we were all on stage, uh, ready to go. We're all giving each other the nod. The guitar tech gives me a thumbs up. I f- I'm under the impression that everyone's ready. Almost everyone. Okay. So I started, and we we played the first song, and and suddenly Rob's nowhere to be seen. We're in t- quite an empty first verse. We, we, we're not, there's no there's no vocals in the first verse, and then we get through into the second verse, and suddenly Rob's on stage, and he he arrives late. Um, but Rob was in the toilet while we started, so um, my bad. Still, did you cover it? Did you cover it well or not? We la- we laughed it off. <laughs> okay, I mean, okay. It was. I think it was a shock for everyone right, because right, right. Uh, I didn't have my in ears in. Oh mate! And the message had been: I had a, a sudden call of nature that could not be avoided. <laughs> Happens to us uh, all. And I told a guitar tech the message hadn't got through to Matt, or maybe he'd been like. And Matt was like, "Oh yeah, start start the song." Yeah. Uh, and normally we 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 started um, the warp tour set with everybody, so there's you know there's a bit of a kind of guitar build up before yeah. um, before any vocals anyway. And I think everyone just expected, "Oh, well, Rob will walk on last," you know, the last second. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that was the only point where I was like putting my in ears in, and everyone's like, "Oh shit." <laughs> um, we all learned lessons, didn't we? Yeah. We, there we go. <laughs> I learned to check. And not just take a wave from yeah. a guitar tech as good. <laughs> and uh, yeah, last minute checks moving forward all the time. So like, okay, everyone here, everyone yeah, present yeah, and correct. So and off we go onto yeah. the stage. Yeah. <laughs> and I learned you got to sometimes just if you if you need a wee, just hold it in. Yeah. Just don't. I think not. that's better than the alternative, <laughs> though. Yeah, exactly. Go go, relieve yourself beforehand. That works very well. Um, yeah, like I say, you started the year out with this album, which, you know, again, congratulations on that. You know we loved it at the magazine. Of course we did. But it's interesting how it really did seem when it finally came because it'd been built to for a long time. We'd heard a lot of songs for, you know, several months before that. And then the breadth of styles and how it's kind of pushed you guys since the last record, really, it's so, so interesting. Um, how do you see that pushing yourselves forward now? Do you want to try even more new stuff? How are you going to build on this success of technology, do you think? Bigger, heavier, more fun. <laughs> Everything that we've uh, kind of started to do here, I think we're just going to amplify it a hundredfold. Yeah, I mean, I think that was that was something we really did enjoy about this album and, and playing it as well, which was it was really gratifying to to do the shows with 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 the full pretty much technology filled set list. You know, now, now we're, um, you know, real e- into the year. It's you can uh, try out a few tracks that, you know, we hadn't played before. And um, yeah, they're all super fun to play live, which was kind of the, the, the main point of writing this album for us. Um, from a, just a pure selfish enjoyment perspective, what is going to be fun for us to play live that, that people are going to enjoy too. And yeah, we've really reacted off that. Um, the crowds have too. And yeah, we don't want to, we don't want to give that up. We also do, I think, you know, we're just starting to think about new music now. You know, it's something we're, you know, not really have got any time for, but we're, we're definitely feeling that, that kind of that hunger to, uh, get creative again yeah. and um, yeah I'm up for I'm just excited to see what's going to happen because we don't really have any you know solid plans on anything and uh, it's going to be exciting to to get back in the studio and just see what happens yeah and like I say as well yeah you allude to it's your busy guys because there's lots more touring to come about to head to the US with Mike Shinoda which is incredibly exciting but then of course there's this arena tour and congratulations on that because that is next level and so so exciting but I guess it's a testament as well to the fact that this album You've always had a dedicated fan base. It feels like it has built massively this year in particular. Is that how it's felt from the inside? Yeah, big time. Yeah, I awesome. think, um, you know, you know, obviously the fans are what, what make the band and we're, we're so grateful to, you know, we've had a lot of fans that have, you know, been through EPs, albums and quite very, you know, I guess varied styles within our back catalogue yeah. and they've still stuck with us despite us putting out you know very different sounding records sure. which um, not all fan bases will um but yeah we definitely feel with this record it's definitely opened the doors to a, to a lot of new people and um yeah just i guess again word of mouth and, and people uh, enjoying 
uh, seeing the record live uh, on the tour we did earlier this year has definitely helped with that. Absolutely. And uh, in terms of the arena shows, what can you? I don't want to spoil too much as we go into next year, but have you thought about how you're going to... Are you going to up your game or is it just going to be, you know what, we're just going to go and do the best Broco show <laughs> we possibly can. We're going to treat it like any other venue or is there extras you're thinking about already? We've got a few few little plans. That okay. A few extras in mind. Yeah, which... Um, <laughs> Again, you don't want to you don't want to talk too much about sure. Um, you know, you don't want to spoil the surprise. Uh, but you know, these are the first arena shows we we will ever be doing. Uh, so you've got to make them like super super special. Sure. You know, we're going all out. Um, it's going to be one of those things where we're just like, yeah, we should have that too. We should, yeah, we should, yeah, yeah. Fireworks, and well, yeah, just like yeah, <laughs> upping the pyro budget. <laughs> yeah. Is that what um, we're thinking? This, the, these are the discussions we're we're about to have, right. where we're going to probably be looking at the back balance, bank balance afterwards and thinking that that was a bad idea. But we wanted we want to put on a show that people are going to remember. That's the main thing, I think. You know, um, going to a gig where people come away thinking I didn't I didn't expect that. Yeah. So um, yeah, with that in mind, we're. Well, we were planning to get deep into talks this month, and now we're doing this uh, this Mike Genoda tour well, yeah. in America. So it's, it's going to be uh, on the road talks, but sure. champagne problems, though, right? I mean, exactly, come on, yeah. that's going to be incredible as well. Um, I guess that's where I kind of want to finish with you guys. Obviously, you're going into 2019. These massive shows. You are an arena level band now, guys. Where do you want to sit at the end of 2019? Where do you want to push this to next? What are the aims? What are the ambitions beyond just new music? Where do you want to push this to? I mean, that is a really good question. Uh, I guess it's something that I don't think you want to think about too much as a band. You know, I don't think we've really considered it because it's, you know, you sort of just take everything that comes. You always just, we always want to push ourselves to, to, to the limits. So it's as far as we can take things, you know, we, we will go. And you, you just hope it keeps growing. You hope more, more and more people hear about you and, and you can carry on doing bigger venues, playing more places playing new places i mean that was uh something that's been super fun for us this year um and really as as an album technology i'd say has opened us up to this this kind of worldwide stage that we dipped our toe in before but this was a real okay we're actually you know touring the states uh a lot and that's what it's about you know you've got to keep going back and you, you know if you want to uh, you know, make your band bigger and get more people to hear about you. You've got to put the legwork in and, and get on the road. Uh, and Europe this year as well has been insane, like playing Poland for the first time and just countries that you wouldn't always maybe go to when you're doing like a, a European tour and, and I guess cities that we've never been to. We still love exploring and uh, suckers for the whole tourist thing. <laughs> like we just enjoy, you know, spending time in a city and, and finding out what it's got to offer, what food they've got to eat, what beers they've got to drink. Um, yeah, that's the important food. stuff. That's the important stuff, man. I um, respect that. So we do, yeah, we just love exploring new places. Awesome. No, well, congratulations again. And that's testament to the whole campaign, guys. You've been expanding. And one of many reasons why you're the winner of Best British Artist here at the Roxanne Awards 2018. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Look Cheers. forward to seeing you again in 2019. All Thank right. Thank you, man. Cheers. John Broker. out and lost the love. It run me just on being fun, fun, fun So don't come round, don't go waste your time